Hey, Dirt Farmer Jay here from DirtFarmerJay.com. Are you having cracks appear at the top of your walls on the top story of your home? What's up with that? Well, actually there's a name for it and there's a solution. Stay tuned. Hey, Dirt Farmer Jay here from DirtFarmerJay.com. Today we're gonna talk about trust uplift. What? Well, that is a terminology for what happens when there's a temperature and humidity change in the trusses in your home on the top story of your house. Now, as you can see right up here, we're getting separation on the top floor. This is the ceiling to uh, the attic right above it. And in certain walls in here, we're getting this separation occur. Here's one example, the worst in the home. The second one, let's take a look at that. So here's another one that we see uh, on a corner uh, where the rafters are running this way right here. And I'll explain why that's significant in a moment. And then we have a wall running perpendicular to the bottom cords of the trusses. Uh, but you can see right here, it's cold outside. Uh, it's warm in here. We have this right here failure happening. And then notice right here, the cult going down that way is also lifted. And if this came up any more than we'd have failure here. Well, let's look at one other example. And here is yet another example. This is about uh, 24 to 28 inches from an exterior wall out that way. And uh, so here you can see again, the rafters are running this way. I'll explain that in a moment and you have this crack appear here. Now this has already been caulked at the beginning of the season, of the winter season. As you can see, there's just way too much lift and the caulk fails. All right, let's go figure out what's going on here. All right, so what's going on? Well, there's a couple things that you should know about to begin with. Number one, this only occurs on the top story of a home. It's not gonna happen on, let's say the ceiling on a, a floor one, and there's a second story above it. Why? Both spaces are conditioned and contraction and uh, expansion of the components are all pretty much the same. So everything moves together well there. The second thing is, it's always gonna happen worse in what line that the trusses or the rafters are in the home. So in this case, the rafters are running like this, this direction, and behind you is the exterior of the home. We're approximately 16 foot away from the exterior wall. The rafters or the trusses in this home are set at 24 inches approximately, meaning that the last rafter that's closest is hitting somewhere close to this. And there is the issue. What's happened when the house was framed and the sheetrock was applied, it was affixed to the bottom cord of the truss. And that means when that truss moves, and I'll show you those dynamics in just a moment, that if lift occurs, this sheetrock's gonna go with it and it's gonna gap that. Now you should know that we've already caulked this approximately two months ago to fill the gap and it continues to move. And I really can't fix it with caulk, even some of the super stretchy kind. And you can see uh, that it's just gonna break out. It's trying to hold on here, but it just gives up the ghost. Before we go any further, can I ask you a favor? If after watching this video, you walk away a lot smarter and you like the way we approach the video, would you like the video? And better yet, subscribe to our channel. And when you do, ring the bell so that you'll get notified approximately every Saturday of another great video about the home, shop, garden, kitchen, or just great homeowner maintenance where you just do it yourself. And check out our website at dirtfarmerj.com. And if you put a forward slash at the end of that website address with the word shop, you can also check out our great merchandise, things like this right here, our coffee mugs, the ball caps, and also our t-shirts. All right, let's get to it. All right, you heard me refer earlier to trusses, and what I've done is created a little scale model of what a truss component looks like in most modern homes. Older homes were built using rafters, this long piece with a center line or a ridge that was put in, and they are all leaned up to it. Uh, more modern framing methods now use pre-engineered trusses like this, and this is called 
uh, just a standard truss um, that this happens to be what's called a 512 pitch uh, truss. Let me explain a little bit of the components here and then you'll see why it all fits about what's going on of why that doggone persistent crack keeps appearing every winter along that wall. So let's look at the different components here. The long across the top, which forms the slope of the roof, is what's called the top cord. The joining piece that goes along the bottom right here is the bottom cord. These intermediate pieces right here, those are called webs, all three of those, although the one in the center is really the king post. Now, another common configuration you'll see on these is an, like a W, where the post is coming here and then it comes up like that and then over like this. Uh, you'll see both of those, or sometimes the center is left open to create a whole upper storage area or a loft or a kid's playroom or whatever. But there's a lot of variations, but you can see this is all put together here in a very uh, specific way in engineering to both carry and distribute loads. Now I threw on here just a little bit of modeling here. These are called nail plates uh, and this point right here and right there is the fixed, uh, or excuse me, the bearing spot on this truss. Now, when this is attached on the house, the outside side of the house, both sides like this, is sitting right here on the bearing point of this truss. And that's very important to know because this is what causes the issue with truss uplift. So let's turn this around and we're going to take a look here. I drew some diagrams on this to tell you what happens and why that pesky gap keeps appearing during cold weather. So in the typical house construction, of course, the space up in here is the attic, meaning that everything above the bottom cord is exposed to freezing air, humidity changes, uh, you have ventilation coming up, and usually through vents or across the top here. You want that air to move and to be outside temperature so you don't end up with um, freeze-thaw problems and everything inside. There's a whole ventilation system that is actually built in the house. But that bottom cord right there is laying in the insulation that is right above the sheetrock right here that is in the living space below right here. So this bottom cord is insulated, it's fairly warm, and most importantly, dry. Not so with the other things up here. So early on, as the seasonal change starts to happen and moisture is drawn in, you have humidity with uh, winter, with uh, things happening early on with snowfall and all that sort of thing, these components up here, the webs right here, and the top cord all start to absorb water. And as they do, they're going to swell. They're gonna grow lengthwise. Now notice that we said this right here, this bearing point is attached on both sides. So it can't grow that way. It runs into the constraints of the outside wall. That bottom most stable component across the bottom is stopping everything from spreading. But meanwhile, these are growing. All of these one, two, three, four, five components are growing. They only have one direction to go. And you see it right here. When you have a triangle, there's only two ways to move a triangle. One is to break it. Well, it's not gonna break, but the second way is it gonna distort. And that's exactly what's going on here during those colder months when all of this gets moisture driven into it and it starts to lift, this point rises and when it does, it lifts right here and you get a slight rainbow right across the bottom. And that's why you get truss uplift. Let me show you how it works right here in our real life example. So what's going on here in our real life example? Well, as I mentioned earlier, the front of the house is behind you and it's approximately 16 foot from the outside of the wall to somewhere about right in here. Uh, so what's happened is 
when the sheet rockers put this in, they attach this to that bottom cord along that rafter. So as that rafter is lifted, the sheetrock is riding along with it. So there's two things that can be done uh, during framing to address it that I'm gonna mention quickly, but if you're watching this video, you're trying to figure out how to do this in existing house. But stick with me just for a moment. If you are framing right now, first of all, if you're within eight inches to 12 inches of a rafter before it hits a vertical wall, don't nail it here. Instead, utilize this kind of setup. So let's imagine that's the top plate right here of this wall. You have um, studs running up to it. And then you're gonna put a block along the top and then your sheetrock is gonna come up against that. So it won't lift any further, therefore opening a gap in the corner. And then by not putting this last one attached, instead bridging here back to the next rafter, either 24 or 16 inches back, then that piece of sheetrock will float and flex slightly and the crack will never occur. So that's something to keep in mind uh, about using top blocking that stops that gap from occurring. Now, what about in your existing house right now? If I really wanted to solve this, what I would do is find the bottom cord of that, um, of that truss and then using a magnetic finder, find where the screws or their nail, in this case, screws are and get those screws out of there to allow this to drop onto this right here, okay? By the way, this is attached with a whole corner block in here, so it is very structural as well. This isn't just sticking up in the air, there's actually a piece in here, and I'll show you how to do that in another video about crown molding installation. But what you're doing is letting the sheetrock set over here. Uh, so if I pop those out, then I've gotta patch the ceiling, and that's a little messy, a little bit, uh, dicey because it's hard to match the ceiling. In this case, we have skip troweling. We could probably do it if this bothered me bad enough. Another common problem that happens around the home is that disposal in your kitchen really starts to stink. Well, we have a great episode right over here that'll tell you how to take care of that quick. And while you're at it, YouTube has another video that they've tailored just for you with all that secret information. How'd they do? Well, until the next time, this is Dirt Farmer Jay from DirtFarmerJay.com. Check us out at the website.